one crash. That's all it takes to wipe out years of your hard work, destroy your carefully organized files, delete every tool and app you've installed, and reset every setting and tweak you've applied. In this video, you'll learn the critical habits to bulletproof your system, protecting your setup by preventing 99% of issues before they even have a chance to happen. First, we'll address the four main causes of issues, then we'll explore three sensitive areas in Windows and how to manage them safely. Windows updates, especially security patches, are essential for maintaining a secure and stable system. The problem lies with feature updates. For example, the 24H2 update is full of bugs. Look at this long list of issues it's causing. It even caused blue screens. So the question is how to keep security updates but stop problematic feature updates. And that's what we'll be doing. To avoid potential problems, wait for a few days to a week for initial feedback from other users to come in. Use the pause updates feature and then look for articles and Reddit posts about the update. If Windows is offering the update, just copy and paste its name. Microsoft themselves will post known issues on their website, so you can look here, but some issues Microsoft won't document. So then you can look in articles. You can also see what the actual users are saying on Reddit. As you can see, many users are having issues. That's why I've held off on updating myself. But I'm also getting security updates. A faster way to research an update is to use AI chatbots. For example, I'll use Copilot. You can use ChatGPT or others. So just type the update's name and then issues or bugs or problems. And then it will look on the internet and give you a quick report. You can even ask it what people on Reddit are saying about it to discover more issues. To stop feature updates and keep security updates, we will be using the Chris Titus Tech utility. So copy this command that I will leave in the description, open the terminal as administrator, open PowerShell, and then paste the command. Go to the updates tab and then apply security settings. It will delay feature updates by two years and it will install security updates after four days just in case the security updates themselves have some minor issues. Note that this is only available on Windows Pro. You can also use an app called Wintoys to do the same thing. Go to Health, System Updates, and set it to Security. Avoid disabling updates completely, because not applying security patches might put your computer at risk of getting corrupted or infested with malware. You should regularly install security updates as soon as they appear. When your computer is going through an update, Never force it to shut down, even if it looks like it's not making any progress. When I used to play video games before, I used to watch those gaming optimization videos that promise somehow I'll get 5090 performance with a 1660 Ti. And the consequence is that I used to break my system a lot. And if I only at least made a system restore point before, recovering my system would have been much easier. You should make it a habit to set restore points before risky actions. Without them, Recovering from an unstable or unusable system becomes significantly more challenging. To create a system restore point, just search for restore, press create a restore point, give it a name, and then click create. Before your system runs into serious issues, it's important to catch any underlying corruption early. Ignoring it now could lead to bigger problems down the road. I'll show you how to scan your system for any hidden corruption. Open the terminal as administrator, we will be using commands that will compare your system files against a clean copy of Windows system files. But that copy might be corrupted itself. So first, use this command to check the health of that copy. This will do a quick check. For a more thorough and deep scan, use this command. I will leave these commands in the description by the way. Now for me, the DISM command did not detect any corruption. If for you it says it's corrupted, use this command to fix it. Now that you have a clean copy of Windows system files, run SFC scan now to look for corruption in your own system. This process will take some time. Another step to make sure your system doesn't have any other underlying issues is to run a malware scan. You can use Microsoft Defender. You can also use third-party antivirus software. I like malware bytes. You can run a malware scan for free. You should go through this process about once every month or whenever you notice small glitches or issues before they turn into bigger problems. 
You can also use Windows to run the DISM and SFC commands, but for more customization and more control, use the terminal. Corruption isn't the only cause for system instability, but software can also introduce hidden issues. So in general, avoid apps that inject themselves deeply into the operating system. If you've heard recently the CrowdStrike incident, it happened because it's injected deeply into the system. Be aware of customization tools like RainMeter and UX Theme Patcher that deeply modify the system. It used to be a heavy customizer, but it caused so much system instability, it used too much computer resources, and it made my system lag a lot. I don't recommend those heavy customization tools at all. So before installing software, take these precautions. For example, I will demonstrate how to verify the stability of Twinkle Tray. First, go to its GitHub page as it will usually have more information. Scroll down and find if there are any known issues. Again, you can use an AI chatbot like Copilot to speed up the researching process. You can use a prompt like mine. And then if it found some issues, you can ask it if those issues have been addressed with an update. If the app does not cause any major problems like a full crash, then you are probably safe to install it. And you should also make sure your software is compatible with your Windows version and with your hardware. To do that, open settings, search for about, click on about your PC, copy device specifications, and then ask Copilot if the app you want to install is compatible with your computer. Also, copy Windows specifications and paste it. If you need more information about your computer, press Windows R and type msinfo32. You can use the find feature to find what you're looking for. Since Twinkle Tray interacts with monitors, I should give Copilot information about my monitor. To find that information, go to System, Display, scroll down, and Advanced Display. I am using here the PowerToys OCR feature to copy my monitor's name, and then I simply just give it to Copilot. And now, since my monitor is also compatible, I can go ahead and download the app without worrying that it might break my system. You can also use Device Manager to get information about your hardware. A good sign that an app is safe is that it's published on the Microsoft Store. You should do the same process when you're updating an app that you already have installed on your computer. So I use Premiere Pro to edit these videos. And there was one update that introduced an annoying bug that made zooming in on the timeline not zoom into the cursor. It would randomly zoom into a part of the timeline. If I've only researched for two minutes, I would have been able to prevent having to deal with that bug. So I will research with you the latest Premiere Pro update. So it turns out there are issues that might affect me, like the audio glitch and the dragging clips issue, and also the hardware encoding issues, since I have a GTX 1660 Ti. And so I should wait until Adobe fixes these issues to update. Updating won't be worth it because crucial features I rely on will be broke. As a rule of thumb, wait at least 3 to 7 days to allow time for feedback to collect. As an extra step, you can test your software or update in a virtual machine. If you don't know what's a virtual machine, it's like another computer running on top of your own computer. So that way, if there's any damage to be done, it will be done to the virtual machine, not your actual computer. You can use the Windows Sandbox to test your software. To enable it, open settings, search for optional features, scroll down, click more Windows features, find Windows Sandbox and enable. You will need to restart your computer to apply the changes. Another option is to install the newer version alongside the older one before completely switching. Corruption and software issues can be obvious, but sometimes the real problem is your hardware. To make sure your hardware is in good health, will be using hardware monitoring tools like HW Info or Specky. I prefer Specky as it's simpler than HW Info. You should look for your hardware's temperature levels like your CPU, your graphics card, and your storage device. If the temperature is colored red, that means the temperature is too high. If your CPU is too hot, you should consider replacing the thermal paste. My computer once had some weird issues come up and weird lagging and it turned out that my CPU temperature levels were too high because of old thermal paste. So I simply bought some thermal paste, it's very cheap, applied it, and my computer was working fine again. 
Another app you can use is a radiograph. You can monitor temperatures, get information on your hardware and on your drives. The best tool for information about your disk drives is Crystal Disk Info. Make sure your drives are in good health because a failing drive can cause system corruption. Also run this command occasionally to check for disk errors. If it asks you if you want to schedule the check for the next time the system restarts, type Y. A final step you should do is to check the health of your memory. Open control panel, search for memory and select diagnose your computer's memory problems. The system needs to be restarted for the scan to be done. I will check for problems the next time I start my computer. The check disk command and the memory diagnose are both available in Windows. If any faulty hardware is detected, replace it as soon as possible and always maintain safe temperatures. You should save this video and come back to it every once in a while and perform the whole process that we've discussed before to make sure your software and hardware are in good health and that you do not have any underlying issues that can get even worse. Now your hardware and software might both be in good health, but Windows has danger zones you should not approach. These are the areas where if you're not careful, you can seriously mess things up. The golden rule before going near these danger zones is to first create a system restore point. It will save you so much trouble if something goes wrong. The first danger zone is the BIOS. The BIOS is the system's foundation. If the foundation breaks, everything on top comes crumbling down. Do not open the BIOS unless you absolutely have to. And don't fall for the trap of tweaking random things hoping your computer will be more powerful. Research, understand or leave it alone. Stick to minimal tweaks. You should also avoid updating your BIOS unless you absolutely have to, which is only when the actual manufacturer is publicly announcing that there are issues with an older version and that you should update. The second danger zone are drivers. Drivers translate your hardware to be readable by your software, which is Windows. Bad drivers can cause serious issues. I used to fall for updating and tweaking network drivers and checking for every real tech driver update for some magic way to get less ping and better internet speeds. Stick to what works and only get drivers from official manufacturers like Nvidia, AMD or Intel. Use Windows Update for general drivers. As an extra step, you can remove the old drivers before. You can use Display Driver Uninstaller for that. You simply select the device type, your GPU and then the manufacturer and then use the Clean and Restart option. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can use NV Clean Install to update your drivers instead of using the GeForce Experience app. If you don't play video games on your computer, download the studio version as it's more optimized for creative apps. Another benefit of using NV Clean Install is that you get to customize what comes bundled with the driver so that you can have the bloated and clean drivers. I use the minimum template as I don't need any other component. In here, I recommend you disable installer telemetry and advertising, perform a clean installation if you didn't use display driver uninstaller and you might want to disable multi-plane overlay and Ansel if you don't need it. Then choose one of these options to finish. If something breaks after an update, open device manager, look for the hardware that you've updated, double click on it, open the driver tab and click rollback driver. The third and final danger zone is the registry. I once used an optimization tool that contains a bunch of registry tweaks and it led to the corruption of my user folder and I had to go through a whole procedure to fix my computer. Look at this long list of tweaks for example. To see the code for registry tweaks, right click on the file and then click edit or open with Notepad. I'll press Ctrl A, Ctrl C and I'll send it for Copilot to verify. Ask it what does this registry tweak do and could it cause any harm or side effects. Look at how many features it's disabling. Always back up first. Use the PowerToys registry preview to find out which folders are getting modified. So this registry file is changing entries in the software folder and in the system folder. Click open key, right click on system and then export to your preferred folder. I also recommend you enable automatic registry backup with Win Arrow Tweak, you can find the registry backup in Windows, System32, Config, and in the Reg Back folder. I've noticed a coincidence that when I stopped playing video games, the issues that I got on my computer were significantly lower. And I think a big reason is that I've stopped applying random registry tweaks 
and using random optimization tools. So prevention is always better than cure. So in summary, manage Windows updates by delaying feature updates and installing security patches. Make creating restore points before major changes a habit. Make sure your hardware is in good health and avoid the three danger zones, which are the BIOS, drivers, and the registry. Click to watch the video on screen right now to learn more about keeping your computer organized.